that there was another bar below there.
Um, do check your uh, bulletins and constant content. The newsletters were out this week. There's a lot of coming in September, so look that over as well. Um, and it is now also with deep sadness, and along with resurrection hope, that I share with you uh, that Don Lehman passed away last night, or yesterday, actually. Um, so please, please hold Rosemary and all of their family in your prayers um, during this difficult time. So with that, take a moment. I would invite you to stand then as you are able, face the clouds, that we might confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we are not following your path, but that it comes to our own. Instead of putting our words before ourselves, we long to make the best seeds our table. When met by those in need, we have to walk and pass by on the other side. Set us to stand on the path of the line. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I Because then, maybe even more than ever, 
I need to have that forgiveness in your life. Very short reading of Proverbs. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, Come up here, than to be put forward in the presence of the noble. The word of the Lord. Continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is. 
is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Amen. Jesus was going to the house of the leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places, places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, Give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor and the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you, will be, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Praise Lord. In my high school, the lunch seating protocol was clear. Unstated but clear. Hood is in the number. Hood sat on one table. Jock sat at another. And those who didn't quite fit in, mind you, sat at whatever table was left. And when I was in the army, I knew exactly what my place, my rank was in that society as well. I watered on my collar. Even at the lunch tables at Wartburg Seminary, there was a definite, if implicit, Protocol. Seniors sat at the table nearest the coffee, and juniors and middlers did not trespass. So, considering the importance of protocol and rank, explicit, explicit or implicit in our society, our practice at Holy Communion is pretty sly. People sit where they want to. And that's not to mention all the folks gathering online. So given the importance of this meal, maybe there should be some explicit seating arrangement, perhaps in order of societal importance, or perhaps in order of financial contributions to the church. You know, this pew reserved for tithers. And then we still have to work out how online participants fit into this ranking system. Well, I don't know. After all, it is the Lord's Supper we're about to celebrate and not our own. And this morning, Jesus is not just our guest, but our host. So maybe we should be consulting him on the protocol, the seeking arrangement, and even on the guest list. Well, it turns out that when we meet up with Jesus in our gospel, he's been invited for dinner at the house of the leader of the Pharisaic movement. Now, Jesus sometimes had a bit of a strained relationship with these important leaders, so they keep a close watch on him. But he's also watching them. And he watches them choose their places of honor and seat themselves in order of importance. And then he tells them this. 
When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, by, by the way, wedding banquet, there's that, that uh, image again. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host, and the host who invited both of you may come and say, give this person your place, and then in disgrace would start to take the lowest place. But he doesn't stop there. He's not just laying out rules for social etiquette. He's not being Mr. Manners of Galilee. No, he's getting at something deeper. For all who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And by the way, uh, and again, this is more than etiquette, this is a whole new way of living. And by the way, Let's make something clear here. Jesus' call to humility here and elsewhere is never a call to become a helpless doormat or to wallow in our shortcomings. It's anything but. Jesus is talking about freedom. Freedom from having to prove your status or worth by putting others down. Freedom to use your power with and for others instead of over others. Liberated humility. Joyful humility. Let's get that right. Jesus is all about healthy humility, never humiliation. Never about wallowing in our wormhood, but all about knowing God's profound love for us all. And after Jesus gives advice to the guest, he also has some advice for the host. When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite like your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And again, Jesus is doing more than giving advice on how to entertain. He's laying out a new protocol for the laying of God. Because of God's reign that comes in and through Jesus, there are all kinds of unexpected guests invited to the banquet. The poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and a whole lot more. Maybe you've heard the saying, when you invite Jesus into your heart, he brings all his friends with him. All kinds of friends. Well, given all that, and given that Jesus is the host of our gathering in the banquet, I think it's pretty clear what our protocol is to be. There is no rank order of seating, no rank order of guest list. As you looked in the mirror this morning, I don't know how you rank the person you saw there. By society standards, or by your own standards, or by God's standards. How holy is the person you saw looking back at you this morning? Where would you put yourself on the seating chart in Jesus' banquet? Well, it doesn't matter. Don't look for a seating chart, there is none. Don't look for place cards, there are none. We don't need them. The host Jesus already knows you by name, and by name he calls you to come. No matter how successful or unsuccessful you feel, no matter how holy or unholy you feel, he calls you by name and gives you all that he has to give. His love, his forgiveness, his hope, his mission, his life. Now, at this gathering of Jesus as our guest, and as our host, we get a powerful glimpse of the future, of the reign of God's time, where there is no ranking system, no need to push others down or lock others out, because we are who we are by the sheer grace of God. But this gathering is not just a glimpse of the future, a foretaste of the peace to come, Jesus, the host, also sets us free to live out this vision here and now. Sets us free for a new way of living 
in the present, no matter how contrary it is to the rank and status of sex world in which we live. So here's the question. How do we live out this vision of radical hospitality? At Advent Luther, in my home church on the west side, there's a group of us that gather every Monday night and look at the text for the following Sunday. And last Monday night, that was our biggest challenge with this text. How do we live the vision? How do we help all of us beloved know they are invited from the wrong? Black and brown and native beloved, poor beloved, LGBTQ beloved, beloved in the immigrant community, etc. Those are good questions to ponder and work on, which I know happens in the same standings. For instance, the social justice team is strongly committed to helping this community live out of that position. So I'm going to end with a few random observations. Number one, on the Thursday night before last, at First Baptist Church, there was an interfaith pride service. Uh, and our church participated in that. It's the celebration of God's grace of all God's children, including folks in the LGBTQ community. Now, it wasn't a communion service. Indeed, it included folks from other faith traditions. The folks from Temple of Bethel, for instance, were there. But I believe it did lead into Jesus' vision of radical hospitality. Sad to say, our church then our church advent since then has gotten angry calls from people in the community complaining about our involvement. Living into Jesus' expansive vision is not always welcome. Number two, I love that St. Stephen's Advent and many other churches are now offering a way for folks to participate online, especially great on the internet works. <laughs> Now, that option, of course, was prompted for, by the pandemic for many churches. You know, a place like Bethel has been doing that for years, but by the pandemic for many churches, including this one. But I think it will remain a way to include those who find it difficult to participate otherwise. Deanna Thompson is a Lutheran theologian. For a long time, she had a very negative view of online participation in worship. It's all about the gathered community, by that she thought, you know, physically gathered, and all of that. But then in 2008, Deanna was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. And through her treatment, making it into the church building was not possible for her. And that life crisis forced her rethinking. Yes, the Spirit can work through the internet to foster real participation. Out of that rethinking came her book, The Virtual Body of Christ in a Suffering World, which I can mention. And a third observation. Holy Communion is the clearest enactment we have of Jesus' vision of the of inclusive banquet. Vision of God's ultimate future, vision to live into in the present. Now it's true. Every once in a while, you'll attend one of these banquets that Jesus throws, aka the Lord's Supper, and there will be strict rules in place for who goes first to the table, or even if you are welcome at all. That can happen, I think, when the waiting staff, including the pastors, forget who the host is. It's called the Lord's Supper for a reason, and as we heard, the host has some definite idea about who it's welcome. So let's end up in prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Come, Lord Jesus, be our host. Call us by name. Help us to know again that we are yours, and then set us free to live by the rules and protocol of God's reign, even here, even now.
us now continue by confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the power of Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into death. On the third day, he rose again. He has done it in the glory. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I write to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the dead. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. For the Church and its leaders, we pray, uphold our deacons, pastors, and bishops who serve and teach your people, including Bishop Joy and the Bishop of Eden. Awaken in your church a spirit of invitation that reaches over ever outward, merciful God. Receive our prayer. For the well-being of creation that is the inhabitants, we pray. Stir in us reverent awe for the beauty of the natural world, for oceans and lakes, rivers and streams, forests and deserts. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. For this nation and people of the world, we pray. Sustain the efforts of those who pursue justice and equality for all. Defend and accompany all immigrants and refugees and all who are persecuted for their ethnic origin or religious belief. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, and for the spirit, we pray. Be present with those who live in isolation or fear, especially those who are incarcerated or detained. Comfort all who are sick or grieving. Especially Jim, Bill, Gregory, Dan, Myra, Lois, Eric, Holly, and Thomas, who are here already, and then John and Maria, Philip, Franny, Maria, Jack, Jerome, Lori, Ruth, Karen, and the family and friends of Lorraine Johnson and John Miami. Merciful God. For this congregation and its ministries, we pray. Prepare children, teachers, and youth ministry directors for a new year of learning, embody their witness to invite others to the table, and hear our prayers of your people offered silently, out loud, or in the comments of our pious deeds. Merciful God, receive our prayers. For all the saints who confess God's name, we give thanks. May we cling to the promise of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us take this time to share Christ's peace with one another.
个山里边，吃不死一口。Thank、you